Hello there, lovely soul. This is Infinity, and I am coming to you from my bathtub. So welcome to the Evolve Now podcast from my bathtub. I might be doing these more often. You know, talks from the tub and all that. Because I love being in here. (laughs) And today I'm actually going to talk to you about my bath ritual that I've been doing for a, maybe a month now. I have to go back and check actually. Didn't think to do that. But here's the deal. To make your bath as amazing as it can possibly be, you're going to follow this recipe and if you're like me, it's going to ruin you <laughs> completely. Ruin you for anything in the future that does not include this whole thing. I mean, if you're like me, you may do this once and hate it, but I seriously doubt it because it feels, and it is so amazing. So this is what I call the bath brew. And I had in previous podcasts and YouTube lives, um, even wrote it in my Instagram and articles and stuff that a cool thing to do to add um, essence to your tub is to just drop a, t- a fruit tea bag or two, whatever tea bag that you might want to, doesn't really matter, but fruit is great. I would drop in like a raspberry or peach or whatever and with the hot water. It just releases that yada yada. However, there's only so much that your bathtub can do without, um, or, you know, because it doesn't get so hot. I mean, I, and I'll get into this in a minute, I use the hottest water possible. Um, But um, even as hot as I would make my baths, uh, it's it's only going to do so much to those tea bags. So anyway, I was guided to actually boil the tea bags and then I started getting into making this brew. And so what it is... um, and, and you can change this up as, you know, it works for you. Uh, but I'm going to give you all the possibilities that I've done and been guided to do so far. Feel free to expand on this and do whatever you want to do for yourself, you know, regionally and seasonally. Uh, you know, those types of things will be a factor too, which in some places in some places maybe not just kind of depends but anyhow let's get to it so you're gonna start in a big pot so I would suggest using you know like one of the uh, like the biggest pot you have unless it's like you know five gallons or some crazy shit like that um use the biggest you know like pasta like to cook pasta in or whatever you I mean the bigger the better that's what I always say right bigger the better so a big pot I think mine is like a four at least a four quart pot maybe it's more I don't know how big it is but it's a big pot okay so anyway gonna start off with boiling your water and then whatever fruit tea bags you want to use And the quantities of them are completely at your discretion. You know, the more you put in, the richer it's going to be. But I find that with that size pot, I put in a total of like three to four tea bags. Um, So I may put in a raspberry and a wild berry and a peach and a blueberry or whatever. Stuff like this. And it gets all mixed up anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Like all the, it's just, the good part is, is that all of it's going to be in there for you. So anyway, you put whatever tea bags you're going to put, put them in there, let them do their thing for about 10 minutes. Uh, and then you're going to add leaves. <laughs> so it could be dry or, or dry sage is great. Um, and I use sage and I use bay leaves. If I had eucalyptus, I would use eucalyptus. Um, I need to get some more. I mean, I do have some, but yeah, it, they're, they're old and like, yeah, I mean, dried is dried, but you know, whatever, whatever leaves you want to use, but I use sage and, uh, dry sage and bay leaves. So you can get a bag of bay leaves 
on Amazon for like eight bucks or something, I think is what I paid for. It's like six ounces of bay leaves. It's a huge bag. It lasts me. I'm going to need to get some soon, but it lasts me for like a year. Um, and I use them all the time. I burn them like with, with my sage bundles and my, uh, Palo Santo. I put it in my tea. I put it in this brew. I'm just constantly using those bay leaves. Um, and also the sage, the dried sage, you can use sage from smudging bun bundles. No problem. Just break up the, the smudging bun bundle. It's what I've done. Um, and you've got your dry sage and you can just drop it in there however much you want. Okay. So got your tea bags, got your leaves, whichever leaves look and, and you know, are good, sound good to you. And then you're going to start adding your fruit. This is so fun. So I've been adding apples and oranges and tangerines. Um, oh, and pineapple. Those are the fruits that I've been adding. Um, I get these like, I think they're three pound bags of these like little apples, whether they're the green ones or the red ones. Um, I think the green ones tend to hold up better and last longer. Personally, that's what I've found. They tend to be a little crisper, um, sometimes uh, a little bit more tart, as we know. But apples are apples. I really do actually. I mean, I like them both, red apple, any type of red apple, um, or the green apple. And again, as many as you want. I mean, at least one of one, or if you're using the little apples, two apples would be great in that size pot. Um, but more if you want more. And then tangerines, again, one or two, or a half of an orange if you want to put a whole orange in there. And then also what I've been guided to do is save my orange and my tangerine peels. So I'll have extra peel. I put extra peel in my, um, my tea that I actually drink. I actually drink this. The last brew that I, bath brew that I made, I, I, I drank it and it was delicious absolutely delicious and I highly and so I'm telling you to do this in a certain order because if you throw everything in <clears throat> you're not going to want to drink it and I've been doing this for about a month and playing with you know the order of things and how much and all that stuff so um but it smells so good you're like wow I wonder what this tastes like it's just fruit it's just cooked fruit and leaves and you know in the end you're going to put stuff in that you're not going to want to drink but <laughs> When you work with the brew in the beginning, you definitely can. So, you know, whatever fruit that you want to put in, you can put mangoes and strawberries and blueberries. I don't, it, whatever. All, any and all fruit's going to be good. It's going to feel good. Um, it's going to smell good. And it's going to taste good. I mean, that's just the essence of fruit, right? So, so you put in whatever fruit you want, however much you're guided to. And then if you have um, any kind of like supplement stuff, I bought this stuff, um, oh crud, now I'm spacing on the name of it. But they have these different mixes and one of them is like Beautiful Me or something. And it has like chia seeds and all this in it and all these like um, antioxidants and like dried berry stuff and so it's just more of that so I sprinkle in maybe a couple of teaspoons of that into the into the brew as well it's the kind of thing that you would normally put in in just water and drink it or your juice or or a smoothie I was guided to put this also in in this brew so you put that in there um also a cinnamon stick or two, some honey, and just let this brew. Now, here's the thing with with the or with it, sorry, let me start over. <laughs> with the with the with the you're gonna let it simmer. You don't want it to like get too excited with the boiling. You may get it, bring it to boil, and then let it simmer and just do a slow cook on it. Um, and just let just sit there on low and just let it do its thing. Now, here's the thing with with timing on this. You can do this in like about, like prep for it a couple hours before you wanna take a bath, or you can let this brew for a day or two and make this a, a really special occasion. Now I, have like I said, I've been ruined for all baths. I do this for every time I take a bath. This, so this is basically brewing on my, 
on next to my my tea that's a hundred percent always going on my stove um now i have another pot of tea that is for a very different purpose at least the end result is which is specifically for my baths because yeah i don't like taking baths without my bath brew anymore so that is what i do um so sometimes like i will start these brews the night or the day the hour after i get out of a bath and so i may not take another bath for a day or two and so the entire time it's brewing and I'm opening it up and getting a face full of that steam and smelling it and and stirring it and oh yeah yeah it smells so good it's so it's just so wonderful the tea and the leaves and the cinnamon and whatever extra goodies and whatever fruit you put in there and just let it simmer and um and do its thing you can, like I said, you could do this for a couple of days, you know, before you actually are going to use it. And um, the fruit, whatever fruit you put in there is just going to get so soft. Apples tend to hold up from the apples and the oranges and stuff. I think it's pretty obvious the apples have so much more fiber. So they'll actually hold and keep their shape unless you're really in there stirring hard or really messing with, with them that they will keep their shape, but the tangerines and, um, and oranges, even the peels will completely disintegrate. You can't even make them out. Um, and after, if you really push it, even the tea bags will burst open, they'll open up and you'll just have tea in there, but whatever, that's fine. Um, but let's just say you're going on a 24 hour thing here. So let's say five, six hours in, your fruit is getting soft, they're swelling up, especially your apples are swelling up, and um, you can really start to smell that. Now, this is about where you're, you would, if you wanted to have some of this tea, you would you know, have this delicious fruit brew, tea brew of yours, little concoction that you made. Um, this is around the time when I do too. So have yourself a cup. You can always add more water. Don't worry about it. But I found that, that it's just really like, it just, it's like it, you know, it's like the in, the inside and the outside kind of thing. You know, you're drinking it and then you're going to be literally in it. <laughs> so it's, it's a really fun thing to connect with this brew that you're making on the inside and on the outside um from the outside in I should say uh okay so next up you're going to you can add this is what I like to add I love coconut milk in my brew um they come in cans I would get organic coconut milk and as much as you want to put in from two big heaping tablespoons to the whole freaking can if you want there's no rules whatever you want to do just make sure you leave enough space and you have enough space in your in your pot um and that coconut milk is super creamy it's it's not overly oily although you will be adding oil um at this point just add your your milk so again this would also be the time for you to drink some of this with the milk in it. It's gonna taste really yummy and creamy, um, like creamy, fruity taste, you know, if you're in, if you're into that. So go ahead, have some. Also, you're probably gonna wanna add some, you know, honey to your, to your cup of tea when you have this tea, cause it's probably gonna be kind of bitter, but depending, you know, you may like it that way. I found that I really, that it was good, but kind of strong. And then I had, I added honey and I was like, oh my God, this is really, ridiculously just so good so good so um so so yeah coconut milk but if you don't have coconut milk you can also use if you if you do use dairy milk you can use dairy milk although that'll definitely curdle you can use any kind of plant-based milk um is what i would really suggest because it's not going to curdle the way in the boiling you know water like like regular milk will, and that might be a turnoff for you. Maybe, maybe not. 
but I would steer against it. The number one choice would be coconut milk. And then after that, you know, you could also add coconut milk and all, as well as oat milk. But we're going to get to the oat here in a second. So you got your tea, you got your leaves, your spice with your cinnamon, your fruits, whatever that is. Um, let it brew for five, six hours, have some, add some coconut milk, have some, let it brew some more. Um, and then just, add, I would say what I've learned for these next couple steps, um, in case it boils over and so it doesn't get, you know, isn't, I don't know, it doesn't, I, it, nothing grosses me out about this. I think it's all delicious. But if you let it sit there too long with these next couple ingredients, it can, um, kind of get clumpy a little bit, but you just mix it up and that goes away. So it's really no big deal. But if you want to drink some more, you're going to want to hold off these last two ingredients till I'm um, close to the end of when you're going to be actually using this in your bath. So the next two ingredients would be flour. So as you know, oat, um, oatmeal or oat powder is really good for your skin. It soothes the skin a lot. And I definitely need that. I get these energy welts and I'm going to be doing another podcast about that soon. I've talked about it a lot, so I'm not going to get into it right now, but I get these energy welts, um, on my body and the oat really, really, really helps. All of this really helps. Like before I, I did in the summer, I was just putting um, pulverized oatmeal in my tub with some, um, coconut oil. And that was fantastic. <laughs> this, what I'm doing now completely blows that out of the water. But, um, but the oat is a really important component, especially if you want to soothe your skin and really just, um, it's just a really, really good like binder for the, for the rest of the stuff too, for all the fruit. So, you're gonna add at least a half a cup of flour. So I would suggest if you can get organic flour, that would be great, but any kind of flour would work here. Um, Cause flour is, you know, wheat, wheat, oats, same thing. So it's just cheaper than like spending a lot of money on um, like some kind of specific oat bath or the pain in the ass of pulverizing oatmeal just use flour it's super thin you know it's super super you know it's not I mean the the texture of it's super super powdered whatever you know what I'm saying um so it blends in relatively easy just put it in slowly and use a whisk to whisk it up I mean even I mean it just kind of tends to clump like as you pour flour which is dry into water it tends to you know hold itself together so you just want to put it in slowly and, and just whisk it so it, it falls apart. And it will, it'll take you like five minutes, but at least a half a cup of flour into your brew. And at this point, I don't, I've never tasted it after I put the flour in. I don't really think it would taste that good or maybe it wouldn't matter, I don't know. I haven't personally tasted it at that point. Um, because at this point, the, the fruit is all like, it's really falling apart. So it's kind of chunky in there. Um, you know, towards that, like five, six to 10 hours, the fruit is still, you know, together. So when you drink it, you're not drinking something chunky. It, it's just like tea. Um, but just really rich with all the fruit and everything and, and the creaminess after you put some coconut milk in there. Okay. So your flour. So do the thing with your flour. Let that can take like five, maybe 10 minutes max. And then you can add your last ingredient, which is actually coconut oil. Um, and you want to put a teaspoon to two, I'm sorry, a tablespoon to two tablespoons of coconut oil in your brew. And just make sure that there's enough space there that it's not going to boil over because if it does and it gets into the, the fire, um, you have oil and fire, right? So you don't want that. So just make sure you have enough space in your pot to put your oil in safely so it can melt and cover it up and keep it on, on simmer so it doesn't boil over and, um, let that do its thing for at least a half an hour, I would say. So things can, 
kind of all bind together with the flour with the oil and everything else that you put in there and then from this point forward like I said half hour you can put it in your bath um, or let it sit there another six hours if you want you're just gonna when you open up the pot you're gonna see that like the um, there's like this layer of film on the top from the flour but it'll you just mix it up and it mostly goes away no big deal okay so next is actually using it in your in your bath and that would be to um, you're going to use, you want to use the, well, first let's back up. You're going to make it, bring it, take the, the top off, the lid off and then bring it to a boil. Get it really, really, really hot to a boil and then turn it down all the way, put it all the way down, cover it up, keep it nice and hot. Get your bath completely, you know, your bath space, all the stuff that you want, you need in your bath, your drinks, your goodies, your, I mean, I get my bathtub because I'm in here for at least two to three, four hours sometimes <laughs> conducting spiritual business and now maybe doing podcasts um, on a regular basis. And so um, you just want to make sure that your space is all set up. I use my toilet. My toilet is right next to my bathtub. And I put a towel down on it and I have this little, I've constructed this little kind of table that's right next to my bathtub so I can put my drinks and I use the floor with my towels on the floor for other stuff. Um, but I do use the, the toilet with it's right next to the bathtub. It makes it really convenient for my, uh, pot of brew, my bath brew. So I put a towel down on the actual uh, toilet cover lid and um, so it protects it and it, you know, cause it's, I'm coming in with a hot pot, <laughs> hot pot. So just make sure everybody's out of the way. Animals aren't under your feet or children or anything. You want a clear path. Hopefully it isn't a long path from your bath, from your, sorry, your, your kitchen to your bathroom. So Get your pot in a safe spot that makes sense, that isn't going to hurt anybody, not going to hurt you. Like I said, for me, my toilet's right next to my bathtub, so it works out really awesome. Um, <laughs> sometimes small is convenient. Um, and as far as your bath goes, you want to use, well, generally anyway, when you take a bath, you want to use the hottest water you can possibly stand. And I know that for empaths, they're like, oh, no, I'm sensitive. I can barely take it warm. I get it. I used to be like that, too. But my guides came in a couple years ago and said, listen, you need to really transmute energy and release negative energy when you're in the bath. And what helps to release that is hot, hot, hot water. As hot as you can take it and then learn to take it hotter <laughs> and work with yourself force yourself to take it hot hot baby i keep my uh water heater as hot like where it says very hot scalding hot are you sure you want to do this kind of hot <laughs> and most people go no I live alone i don't have children and if people happen to come here and they use my water i just tell them extremely hot don't fuck around with the hot water um and i do that because i like to take very long baths and i like i need to um dump at least some of the water and put in new hot water but what i'm going to tell you to do here you're going to for really the best effect you're going to have two full baths so so if you don't keep your hot water if you have a, a small water heater especially but it, or if you don't keep your water too hot maybe in preparation for this if it's not a big deal make your water heater go hotter um, and what you're going to do is just get into the shower, do a shower, um, cleanse yourself with soap, do that whole thing. Shave if you shave, if you do a shaving thing, do that. So take a shower before your bath, then fill up your bath with the hottest water that you can do. And the best way to do this while you're in it, so you can do this is just have it like pretty decently hot. And then 
once it gets to a certain point, you're going to just put hot in it and then get used to it getting hotter and hotter. And then um, fill it up to like three quarters of the way so you can be sitting in it and then laying down in it without it filling, you know, getting overflown, over, yeah, overflowed. Yes. <laughs> I said overflown. I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> okay. So next you're going to do what I do. Let me tell you what I do. And you could do that. You can do it um, all the way or, or the way that I do it. You can put the whole pot in it for this one bath. If you're like, there's no way I'm going to do a second bath after the, after the first bath. Or you can split it up like I do it. Um, so first things first, I do. Oh, wait. I kind of skipped a spot. Sorry. So your first bath, you're going to fill it up with just clear water clear just clear water um and let yourself soak in that clear water nothing in it for at least 10 minutes and it's just something really special and pure about just being in pure water without anything in it and Gaia um has guided me to do that and I really enjoy so not like starting your bath with with salt or bubbles or brew or anything it's just hot water and you and crystals crystals would be the only thing you might be able to hear that that's one of my crystals I always have a bunch like my bath crystals are always in my bath they're always here so I don't even talk about them um, <laughs> because they're just always here um, but I have a bunch they would probably equal like three handfuls of crystals all sorts of crystals um, and, and your crystals can take this brew, no problem, by the way. Okay, so after your first initial bath, you're going to empty out your bath um, all the way and then start a new bath. And then you're going to take that bath to three quarters of the way, turn off your water, and then dump in half of your pot of your brew um, or the whole thing. If you don't think you're going to take a third full bath. Um, but a half of that pot is good for a bath because like it should be dark enough to where when you pour in half of the pot, you can't see your legs at the bottom of the, of the tub. So that's what you want. You want to be able to like, not like after like an, like two inches into the water, like you cannot see your hand anymore. You know, you want it, you want it dark. Um, and your brew is going to be dark from the tea and the fruit and the cinnamon and the flour and all that business, whatever you put in there, it's going to be really, really, really dark. You're going to be like, damn, this is dark. Like it starts off really pretty and like red and, and clear, like this really, it starts off really pretty and it ends up being this like really dark, thick, brewy business, um, that smells amazing. But, um, once you put it in your water, it's really, it's like it's brown and it's dark um that's what you want so I would suggest do the half thing see what that feels like if you're like I want more now pour it all in there just do what you do what your goddess or godlike self wants you to do and then just enjoy it be in it for a while at least a half an hour like really get your fill of it um if the water starts to get cold let some go and just add that hot water so you can keep that that warmth going in that's what i do and then after doing that for a few times then i'll let it all go i'll bring it all back in with a new a new tub of water and the last of my the second half of my pot and then another however long after that that i'm going to be in it and you were, what you're going to find is you have these big pieces of fruit in your tub with you. Um, some are chunky, some are disintegrated. You'll see, um, you know, these apple peels. It's really interesting. That'll be the last thing left of your apple or the apple peel. Um, still holds up. It's really strong. Really quite amazing. Um, and so you have your pieces of apple and may and pineapple um like i said any citrus is really going to fall apart even the unless you don't leave it in for too too long you'll you will have these pieces of your uh 
of your Rhine. Um, so, you know, just play with it. I rub that fruit all over my face and my body and I just, you know, grab the pieces of apple and I smush it in my hands and I rub it all over my skin and it feels amazing. Um, it really, they really hold the heat quite well. Um, really a lot. So you'll like, you know, after you pour it into your water, you know, you mix it up, you'll see how cool that feels to mix it up and just how amazingly rich and supple and perfect. Like, I cannot even tell you how good this feels to be in this tub with the fruit and the, and the herbs and the oil and the leaves and just everything. It just feels so, so fucking amazing. I'm so addicted to this. I love it so much. Um, like I said, I don't take a bath without doing without doing a brew anymore. And it's just part of my routine. And I love having it on the stove. I love being in it. I love playing with the fruit. Um, and I hope you will too. And, you know, you don't have to do it every time you take a bath. Not everybody needs to be as extreme as me. I know it's a lot. Um, but at least once a week, make yourself a bath brew, really indulge yourself in, in the entire process of it, making it, you know, putting your intentions for self care and self love and body love into the brew. Talk to Gaia while you're making the brew. Talk to your guides about how good it smells and how good it feels when that steam hits your face and how good it tastes when you drink it, when you're just starting to make it, because it, it really, it really does, um, it really does taste amazing. It's like that, it's like apple cider on just a mass amount of mushrooms. <laughs> it's just like, it's just, so it's like I've had apple cider and that was good. It was like apple and spicy, but this is like like the citrus and the tea and the it just the layers and the layers and the layers of it just is so delicious. Um and I have done it before where I was guided to just get out of the bath straight from here and not even rinse it out of my hair. Oh, and by the way, my hair has never been so happy since I've been doing these brews and just letting my hair be in this water. Um, so it's like a hair mask without even trying. So yeah, by the way, extra bonus points for it being really good for your hair. Um, and your skin. Oh my God, my skin is so happy and so soft and feels so freaking good. But yeah, I was guided once to just get out of this straight and let it just be in my hair and on my body without rinsing it off. I've only done it once. Um, and it wasn't too oily or anything. My hair, you know, I needed to take, I needed to take a shower the next morning or whatever, but um, but yeah, just once you're done with your bath brew, with your, yeah, your bath brew, your bath and your bath brew, just, um, you know, if anybody's worried about like, oh, what about the drain with all the fruit and blah, blah, blah. Well, it all disintegrates anyway, but if there's any little pieces, you can, you know, pull it out, um, or just make sure it goes down the drain. It's not, should not be a big deal that you're not nothing is hard in here so just make sure any pits or anything that you're if you're using anything but just let your let your body let your guides guide you as far as what to do I just told you what I've done with all of the ingredients that I've been guided to use and the fruit I've been guided to use um has been apples tangerines and oranges as far as fresh fruit cinnamon sticks Oh, also, um, Himalayan rock salt, like a hand, like I have like these little pieces. Um, they're not, it's not quite, it's like before you grind it to make it powdery, it's like these little teeny tiny pieces, but I'll get like a, 
um, a small handful of that and put it in the brew as well. So I, so if you're going to drink it, you know, wait till the end for the salt as well. Um, but anyhow, nothing that you have is going to, you know, not go down the drain. Everything's going to be, be just fine. Don't worry about it. And just rinse out or, you know, get a pitcher with water. Make sure you just rinse out the bottom of your tub once you're, once it completely, you know, goes all out or just, you know, that's it. That's it. And see how good and it feels and how yummy it is. And thank me later. <laughs> Send me an email at infinity the sorry infinity at thehealingbutterfly.org. Let me know if you've done this, or send me a DM on Instagram. Um, let me know if you've done this and how good it feels. What fruits you used, or if you use different oil. You can also use avo avocado oil is great. Don't use olive oil. Do not use olive oil. It's really oily and most hair does not like olive oil even my coarse dry curly hair does not like olive oil I experimented with that once and I will never be doing that again <laughs> so avocado oil or coconut oil is what I would suggest for your oil um, but if you don't want to use oil you don't have to uh, you don't have to do or use any of this stuff it's just the what I've done the way that I've done it and and my results have been fantastic. It feels so good. I know I keep saying this, but it feels so good. My hair loves it. My skin loves it. My body loves it in general. I feel closer to Gaia in the bath when I have when I have all this fruit around me um, and all these essences and herbs and stuff. But do your own thing and just, you know, share and let me know how great your bath brood bath is. <sighs> okay, now next topic and last topic where are we at 36 minutes okay so next topic and last topic um moon signs for 2022 so guy came through the other day as i was in the bath of course and we had a little powwow about uh moon signs and she said she wanted to tell me and have me tell everybody that in 2022 we really need to be paying especially from this point forward so we just moved into Aquarius season today, the 20th of January, 2022, just into Aquarius season. That's a fire sign, or sorry, an air sign of Aquarius. Um, and I do believe that we're going to be getting more winds um, uh, just kind of everywhere. <laughs> so... My prediction is you'll be like, wow, it got windy. Um, yeah, it's going to be getting windy with uh, Aquarius season. So expect more air to come through. Um, a lot of air energy, obviously. But aside from that, it's it was coming into, get, leaving Capricorn season, coming into Aquarius season and Gaia is saying, and for 2022, it is a six year. Two plus two plus two plus two equals six. It's a six year. It's a divine feminine number. Divine feminine is connected with Gaia, Gaia, and, and the moon connected, right? So the moon, feminine, so it kind of all circulates around this divine feminine energy. Dave and I have talked about this for 2022. If you did not watch our January podcast, January 3rd podcast about the month of January in review, please go back and listen to it. Um, we get into, we kind of wrap up 2021 and get into 2020, um, January, 2022. Um, and we talk about that, uh, about how it's a divine feminine year. Um, so with that said, uh, guy came through saying the divine feminine, um, the power of the divine feminine, um, and moon signs are going to be much more prevalent. People are going to be feeling way more into and with their moon signs, especially females. And, and especially if your moon sign is a water sign, because the moon is, is, uh, is, real, is ruled by water and they've got that whole water business, water, the divine feminine, the womb, the amniotic fluid. So water being, you know, that much potent with the divine feminine energy. So especially if you're a, a moon sign, a water sign, moon sign, 
Um, you may feel it even more to be connected to your moon sign to pay special more attention. So when you're looking up anything with your horoscope or or zodiac stuff or astrology stuff that the, that you're looking more at your moon signs and what's going on there and and where uh, where the placements are and the transits are for your moon sign this year. So for me, it would be Pisces. My sun sign is Sagittarius. My ascending sign is Leo. So I have two fire signs and a water sign. And then my Gaia sign is Gemini and that's an, an earth sign. Um, so if anything, you want to be more connected with your Gaia sign, which is the opposite of your sun sign and your water, uh, sorry, not your, your moon sign. And if it's a water sign, even more so. And if you're a female or if, or you may feel this, even if you're, if you, you know, if you're male, but I just get this feeling that, 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 you know, really going to be, um, working with and connecting to those divine feminine energies this year to really help ground us in that power of the of the feminine and the creational energies the gestation energies the putting things together you know within and uh, and getting things to to build on the outside and and the nurturing, the self-love, the communication, the the <clears throat> more connection with Gaia, and just all the things of the divine feminine, um, really in play this year. So, if your focus is on the divine feminine, um, as far as you know, connecting with your moon sign and paying attention to your your menstrual cycle or your the natural flow of energy with your cycle the the swings of time with your with your cycle um that would be a really good thing to do for yourself and just to to know and pay attention to where you're at in your cycle with you know in conjunction with the moon um a lot of people after they've been on the ascension path for it doesn't even need to be that long. It could even be like six months. You may find yourself already getting into sync with either um, new moon or full moon periods or them moving around. My period moves and bounces from new moon to full moon. Um, it has, over the course of the last couple of years, pretty, pretty... Uh, what's the word consistently um over the years for you know i would say at least flip-flopping two to three times a year depending on what's going on so that's really really interesting of course me consciously i have nothing to do with that um it's just like oh i'm getting my period a week earlier it's a week and a half late you know because it's shifting um to line up with cosmic events aside from the the moon going from new moon to full moon it will also line up with equinoxes and solstices and stuff like that so it does this really interesting thing it's, i should have charted it way more closely than just kind of knowing it but um yeah that is something that's definitely happened so you're gonna want to if you don't already pay attention to that please pay attention to the moon the moon cycles um and your moon sign and if you don't know your moon sign, uh, this is what I've been told and guided to tell you about that is, and a lot of people don't know what the time of their birth, and that's what you need to figure out your moon sign, or that's what you've been told you need to figure out your moon sign. Guy has come in because I said, well, some people don't know their moon signs. They don't, you know, they don't know the time. They know the day of birth and not their time of birth. And they can't ask and there's no way to get this information, at least that they know of. I mean, you can talk to me and I can get that information for you, but... It's really not necessary. What you can do is um, just look at the day in which you were born and see how that lands with the lunar cycle. Um, the reason why it's known that you need your birth time to know your moon sign is because that moon, um, the moon shifts into different signs like every 30 hours or something like that or how many hours it's like every two and a half days so every like 40 something hours i can't remember the exact number of hours but it moves so if you look at a lunar calendar you'll see that it's in sagittarius for two and a half days 
and then it goes into Capricorn for two and a half days and then it goes into Aquarius for two and a half days and it just follows the zodiac until it just repeats and it goes over and over and over and over again so if you're born on a day where it's like an in-between day as it's transitioning from one to the next that's where knowing when you're born really is helpful however if you're like shit I was born on a day where it was either it was going from Sagittarius to, to Capricorn let's say and uh, or sorry um, yeah Sagittarius to Capricorn and um, so so then you would just kind of go by process of elimination do you know like if your mom's like well I knew it was in the morning but I know exactly what time if it's or at night or you know one of those things you can go okay so it was at night was it you know late at night was it early evening and just kind of and then just and then look at those two signs and go which one is really calling to me is it really calling to me more Sagittarius that is my moon sign or is it calling to me that it's more Capricorn that's my moon sign you know, and use your intuition, use your guidance, use your guides to tell you what it is. But, but get down to what you, know, you may just look at the day and be like, oh, that's easy. It wasn't even a transitional day. I'm a friggin' Sagittarius moon side. It's not that hard, you know? So don't bail out on this. If you don't know what your, what your time of birth is, just take a look at that specific day, the date of your birth and where the moon was at that day. And then by process of elimination, decide or figure out what your moon sign is and then make it so. That's your moon sign. Done. Okay? And then just start paying attention to your moon sign more in this year. You know, I've really, I felt that when she told me. It was like, now you're a Pisces. It was almost like she told me, you know, stop thinking. When you like think of yourself like, what's your sign? You know, you're so conditioned to think first Sagittarius because that's your sun sign. But she's like, I want you to start thinking in terms of I'm a Pisces. That's my moon sign. But for this year, I need to be thinking in terms of that Pisces energy. And it is a water sign. So it makes perfect sense. That divine feminine energy. It's I'm a Pisces. You know, it's 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 that hardcore water um, water sign. So that mutable water sign, which is really cool, too. So. Anyhow, those were the business, the, the points of business here today on the podcast from my bathtub. I want to thank you for being here with me again. Reach out. Let me know how your bath brew goes and how the shift into really thinking and connecting more with your moon sign feels to you. If you've been thinking at all about that or if this moon sign thing is a new thing to you and your Gaia sign, that is a new big one. And most people are not connected to their Gaia sign, a really, really big one to get into. So explore your Gaia sign. Uh, again, that is the opposite of your sun sign. So my sun sign is Sagittarius. My earth, or sorry, my, yeah, my earth sign or my Gaia sign is Gemini. So just take a look at the Zodiac Wheel and figure out your Gaia sign. Look into it. Google it. I'm going to be doing a, um, I do write about it um, for the Evolve Now Master's Program. However, um, I will be writing an article more about it. But there are a few articles online now if you look up your Gaia sign or, your, or what your Earth sign is. And that is something to really pay attention to. It's a totally, it's like everybody just knows um, sun moon ascending but it should be the four sun moon ascending and your Gaia sign or sun Gaia whatever however or you want to put it in but we are on Gaia and it's the one like thing that people are not conditioned to look at or to know about themselves is what their Gaia sign is which is really mind-boggling and even for myself I was like what it was Gaia herself who came to me when I was building the um and channeling the the master's program and she said um, what about me? What about the everybody's earth sign? What about everybody's Gaia sign? Nobody, nobody knows about this, and they're they're earth they're earthlings, and nobody knows their earth sign. And I was like, holy shit! What? <laughs> I can't believe I haven't like. Am I like what? Uh, uh, it kind of like broke my brain a little bit because it's like, how can this be not a thing? How, how is it possible this isn't a thing? But yeah. So 
And and Dave and I have talked about it in our podcast over the last couple months. The guy assigned it is, uh, like I said, it is part of the master's program. You could take a look there. Uh, it's throughout the the different um, meetings and processes that we go through um, in that master's program. And just a heads up. Um, the master's program is totally live if you have not looked at that yet. The Evolve Now master's program. Also, I'm um, diversifying the master's program coming in soon with new options for the program for people who can't do that full program because it is really long, expensive, intense. Not everybody has the resources to do that and want to wait until they do. So um, I'm being guided to kind of pull it apart and do different things with it to make it so it's easier for people to be a part of. So I'm going to be working on that in the coming weeks. Um, So heads up on that. If anybody's interested, you know, feel free to send me an email like, oh, you're diversifying this massive program and just in, you know, doing different things. I'm interested, you know. Just let me know so you could be one of the first to know when it's done. But we will be working on that. That's uh, information that's come through in the last week or so. So anyway, for now, that is all, my beautiful, lovely soul. I am so glad that you spent time with me here in the bath. I might be coming to you more often for my bathtub. I definitely have a lot of topics to discuss that's um, being worked on on the schedule for the podcast I'm super excited about. So... Um, until next time, I hope that your 2022 is going fabulously, that you feel fantastically, that you're motivated and inspired and taking care of yourself and excited about this new year. Um, I was going to say something, what, something popped in. Oh yes. If you have not yet, um, read my article on on February 22nd, 2022. So I'd be two, 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 two. <laughs> it's a really, really big day. And I'm doing, um, holding an event that day and there's pre-work for the next month because it's almost a month away. Um, a little bit more than a month away, I should say, uh, for that date. And I am going to be, uh, making that available to sign up for. It's on a sliding scale, just like all my, a lot of my stuff is going to be in the future as far as payment goes. And, um, I just really suggest that you go and take a look at that article. If you go to my website, um, right there at the top is a link to that article, or you can just go directly to my medium, uh, profile. It's medium.com slash at infinity underscore nine six three. I've been forgetting to tell people the at sign in front of the infinity. So it's at infinity underscore nine six three to get to my medium.com to read that article. Um, and get all the info on the 22nd of February. Cause it's, you know, it's only a month away. And it's a really, 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 really big deal. And I hope that you can join us. So now I'm leaving. Have a great rest of your day, afternoon, evening, sweet dreams. And I will see you all soon. Till next time. Bye for now, you guys. <laughs>